That's not silence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's 20 seconds, whatever. That's Couldn't do it. Couldn't it's do like it. you're moving around. And Sorry. <laughs> I was trying uh, to be silent. I don't. Poor uh, it's it's podcast editing guy can deal with it. All right, so, and, you know, can either you roll and start or fuck okay. it, we're going okay, three, two, go first. Okay. one, up, up, what's it? Hi, everybody. Emily McCarthy here. Bianca Navarrete. Yep, and we're hosting the Go Rug Show today. Jason and Blaine are out of town, and it's International Women's Day. Happy day to all the women out there. We are super excited. This is our first ever Go Rug Show, and we're here to really talk about women, and we kind of know that issue pretty, pretty well. Yeah, so we're going to... We're, we're gonna, you know, I got, I, the guys got a little heat and it was deserved because you can't really have a, an episode on badass women and not at least invite some women to it. I mean, they made some solid points, but <laughs> yeah, we need women to reel them in and give them the real <laughs> perspective here. Yeah, no, I, I watched it. It was, I, I enjoyed it. I mean, Jason's talking yeah. about his mom. She's, she's an awesome woman. I, I've always respected her. She was my tennis coach growing up and, and, and just continues to be just a remarkable woman in my life. Um, and you talked about his daughter, you know, that's something what every family is going through, you know, how do we raise yeah. the, the right child pretty much, not, you know, yeah. right daughter or son. How do we, it's just, how do you raise the right person? Yeah, so they, they it, was a, it was a good show, and, but the elephant in the room, which a lot of, a lot of the GRT women hit me up after, thank you for doing that, is that, you know, we need women to talk about women in GORUCK, and that's what we're here to do. So, um, if you don't know me, I've been with GORUCK since the beginning. Uh, Jason and I go way back. Um, you know, he, uh, he likes to say I, I came on to him, but we all know it was really the other way around. Um, but, you know, it's been really cool to see how Go Ruck has evolved over the years. Um, I, I've been here since, for, gosh, when it was almost all guys. Um, I wasn't the first woman okay. to do an event. I know, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, uh, it was, I wanted to do it because I, I just wanted to prove that, like, hey, I can do something like this, too. Yeah. And I know that's a lot why women want to do these things. They see something tough out there and they're like, you know, I can do this too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we're, today we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about Go Ruck and women and some other cool things down the line, but I want to address the elephant in the room about what I think women are talking about today. And, and that's really this awesome time that we're living in, in our, in our country. And hopefully it's gonna extend beyond those borders as well. And it's already happening in other um, nations. Um, but it's really about, you know, this, this is when women are actually not only, you know, being heard, but there's action coming with it. And, you know, it, I actually, I grew up in a time where a lot of the feminism work had kind of been done, you know, yeah. by my mom and, and my grandmother, and they fought hard for things, and they, they, they lived in a time when it was, the girls weren't allowed on sports teams, yeah. and... They had to overcome all those obstacles that right. nowadays, thankfully, they're not as big of a challenge, but they still exist. Yeah, so you know? voting, you know, something mm -hmm. like that, and, you know... The, the cool thing about all of this is that badass women have existed since the beginning of humans. <laughs> yeah, this isn't something new. We've been here for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, unfortunately, GORUCK did not coin this phrase. Um, it's, it's, it's very clear that GORUCK attracts a lot of awesome and amazing women. And um, I have really love going out and doing events and meeting um, all of you and, and, and being able to you know, get impressed by, gosh, how strong they are or yeah. how tough they are or how inclusive they are, how kind yeah. and, and good people, like what good people they are and, and, and just giving back to the community. Um, but th this is not something new. And I think that's go rock a lot of what's crazy about this community. It's not really, you know, these things existed 
before all of us. It's just that go We've rug, embraced them. Go Rug reminded people mm -hmm. about some of them or reminded them to get outside and, and do these sorts of things. I mean, I think about badass women in history and there's so many great examples, but one that always like speaks to me is Cleopatra. Like oh, she yeah. is just a fucking badass. Oh, like yeah. she That's my mom's go-to too. Yeah, really? Yeah. Okay. I, I read this great uh, like biography by Cher Schiff. And it just really tells her story before it was hijacked by, you know, stupid movies and, and a bunch of guys like may, trying to objectify her. But, you know, she, she, she was, you know, she inherited the kingdom as like a 10 year old, you know, had to marry a brother or two, yeah. you know, that but <laughs> she, she ended up, you know, being just owning the entire world at that time. Like she was the one of the most powerful monarchs out there and you know she married she married some guys Julius Caesar and Martha Anthony had, ch had children with them and just a shrewd and political genius I mean like that is awesome yeah, she I, was she showed guys like you know how, how women can rule the world right and then you along the way we've got probably so many ones that are not even mentioned. I mean, Jason mentioned Mia Hamm. I was a soccer player, so oh, growing yeah, up, that, awesome. that, that's my go-to. Yeah. But I mean, nowadays, I mean, just look at if, even fictional characters. Look at Wonder Woman. Look, yeah. at, look at Katniss from Hunger Games. Like, yeah. you know, great. they're all fictional characters, but they're still teaching us females, like, hey, yeah. we're all badasses and we can still, <laughs> like, yeah. we can conquer the world and be, yeah. be something. But, but the cool thing is that it's all in different shapes or sizes, right? Like, it's not about, you know, having to be the strongest. It's, it's not always, you know, it's about who are yeah. you do being you. Yeah, I, and I like that. It's not about how strong physically you are. Yeah. There's different types of strongness, and there's different types of intelligence. Like, yeah. women get bashed a lot for having a very strong emotional intelligence, but that is something that human nature needs in order to evolve and to succeed. Hey, uh, I, I, I live and die <laughs> by I mean, that, I, I work you know? CSR, so we have to have a lot of emotional yeah, intelligence, you, you know? That, no, absolutely. It's, it's key. And, and, but it doesn't, you know, there's plenty of women out there that, you know, maybe have other strengths that are, you know, you know not emotionally intelligence or, or not emotional intelligence, but, but uh, that is a strength yeah. uh, in general. Um, you know, you know, and I go back to thinking about the history of women and what it means to be a woman. Yeah. And, and I, I see where we are today. And, and a lot of this is stemmed with the Me Too movement. And I, I, I want to talk about it for a minute because I think, I think it's, it's I, th I think it's something that's interesting that's happening here. And this is like the first time, like I said, in my lifetime where I've actually considered this concept and felt like I, I'm, I really want to hear what's going on and I want to participate and I want to understand not only what how it affects me but how it affects others and there's a responsibility that comes with this movement. I agree you have to use it in a very wise way you don't want to overuse it so that it has no effect whatsoever. Right right so it's like you know here we have you know you, you I, I think about this the the woman um, Rachel Dan Holler. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have, I don't know if you you or it, uh, the other people out there have read her statement, like what she said in the courtroom. This is the woman who who basically orchestrated and took down Dr. Larry Nasser. May may he rot in hell. Um, <laughs> and and I found her so compelling and what she wrote so magnificent. I mean, I actually read some tweet that said, you know, I just heard the best sort of, you know, sermon of today. My, the, who would have thought that the best lesson in, in charity and love for God or, you know, love for another would come from a courtroom statement, yep. a witness statement? And I read it, I, I read it a few times. And, I, and, and if you haven't read it, I, I, I encourage you to read it because it is a thought-provoking and, and fascinating piece. Um, and, and just for those who haven't really delved as deeply into it as I have, um, she, she was abused at a young age by, by Dr. Nasser, um, and she went through a, a roller coaster of emotions. I'm, I'm 
you know, obviously paraphrasing for her, I, I didn't experience that myself, but she, um, she, she told her story and people started to listen. Mm -hmm. and, and she not only told her story, but she did her research. She, she put her reputation on the line. She showed up to places where she wasn't welcome and she got battered and she got bashed and she got threatened and, and she was, you know, made to feel this big. And, and what I just, she persisted, not, not so much for her sake, but for all the other little yep. girls out there and all the other children out there that are in vulnerable positions. Cause this is, let's be honest, like this is, this, this is not gender specific yep. on some level. And, you know, I loved how they said that she created an army. She got other people to say, hey, I'm going to come up and I, I too had something awful happen and I need to share my story in order to heal and to prevent yeah. it happening again. And I like that phrase, she built her own army. She did. She, she did. And that's something that I think the, the judge said. And, it, you know, it was, it was, it was a, definitely a big event, but it's, it's one that I think I'm going to go back to and remember in my life as, as a a really interesting turn point of, you know, what it means to support one another and, and, and consider what it means to be a strong, a strong person and a strong woman. And it, and it you know, I was thinking about what Blaine said about yeah. what he wanted, you know, his daughter to, to feel like growing up. And, and, and he said confidence and confidence is 100%. Like that is, that is key. And, and, I, I'm sure that you... Yeah, it's going to get you a long way. Confidence is going to yeah. get you a long way. I'm sure you grew up feeling like you could do a lot because oh, of I the... was the only girl. So I, <laughs> I grew up yeah. with, you know, I, I was the ruler of the house. Right. Uh, sorry, Mom yeah. and Dad, if you're watching, but I, I <laughs> was the king me too, of the me house. Too, yeah. no, sorry, Mom. Um, thanks for watching the kids while I'm here. <laughs> um, the, yeah, so, you know... That's yeah. If you if you have confidence, you can pretty much walk into a building, and people are either gonna they're gonna have a bias towards you. And, yeah. and unfortunately for females, having a lot of confidence is gonna be either a real good for you, or it can come back and bite you in the ass. So yeah. confidence can sometimes be seen as like a bitchy. You know, she's 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 kind of bitchy. Or it could be yeah. like, wow, this is a badass person. I'm gonna stand behind them. Yeah. And I went to a conference a couple of months ago, back in October. And it was innate bias. And it was the one com like one conversation that stood out to me. But mm -hmm. it's like everyone's born with an innate bias, right? Mm -hmm. So we're instantly, you know, th there's going to be those stereotypicals like of, you know, women can't do this because they're too emotionally involved. And right. women can't, um, you know, do go in sciences or mathematics because it's just... Or do a GORUCK event. Uh, or, <laughs> or do a GORUCK event, exactly. But... It, like we have to realize that those are just innate biases that we are basing off prehistorical things like that, that that's yeah. something in the past yeah that's not let's not look at the past we can't change that mm -hmm. but right now as females we are in that movement where that innate bias is getting overlooked and that's the right. big thing Pe we have to like learn to overlook these innate biases and overcome them right but I, you know so confidence key love it it's important i'm going to take it a step further because i'm going to say self-worth Mm, that's a big one. Self-worth. And if I had to pick one, which hope, thankfully we don't have to, but self-worth, that, that's something that you can't, you can't take away, you, someone can't take away from you. You know, my, my father used to always say like, you know what, Emily, like they can take a lot away from you, but they can't take that, you can't take away your self-worth. Yeah. You know, and I thought about that a lot, you know, being a woman, um, growing up in this world, living in other cultures, seeing how women and, and the more vulnerable in our society can be treated, and, mm -hmm. and now being as a mother of, of a daughter and sons, and thinking that the, I, want, I want my children and I want others around me and, and anyone to, to feel that they are worthy of, of, of being treated a certain way. And I think that this movement that's happening is basically saying, we, we deserve this. We deserve to be treat, you know, we, we have self-worth and we're not gonna let you take that away. And I, I think it's, I'm just so excited. It, it's really, 
it's, it's, it's a great time to see this happening. And I, but I will caution that the responsibility is still there, right? Yeah. You, you cannot, you know, this only works if everybody is involved. And that's not just women, that's men. Men as well. <laughs> and that's, you know, young and old and, and, and you know, big and small and all, all, all walks of life. We have to support each other and, and make sure that people are getting the self-worth that they deserve. I agree. And I, and I see this when I go to events and I see women that they've, they've confided to me, like, I'm really nervous. I don't know if I can do this. Oh, yeah, I get that a lot. You, I, you I did it. I, I do. You know, we get a lot of questions, male and female. But yeah. me particularly, I'll get hit up every once in a while. I get a lot of questions of, how, what did you do to prepare for your HTL? Yeah. More females than males, because I think males go into this thinking, I've done a tough. I know what mm -hmm, to expect. Mm -hmm. I can do this. Yeah. Females, even though they've done a tough, they still want to do their research. What did you do to prepare? Yeah. What, what, what did you wear? You know, what did you pack? <laughs> <laughs> I hate that picture. <laughs> I, we love that picture. It haunts me. So it's you, okay. so you as an HTL finisher, yes. right? So that's, that's pretty badass. And all, to all of you out there who've done that, like, I am never doing an HTL. I will tell you, you that. You, you say that, mm. but you know what? I, I'm going to do a heavy. I'd rather, I'll do, I'm going to do a heavy first. I okay, haven't wait, had my chance out, yet, but I will. Yeah. That's exactly what I said. I said, let me oh, start you said with the heavy. And then if you guys don't know already, uh, my, one of my best friends is dating Lee McCarthy. So I said <laughs> to Allison, hey, I'm going to do a heavy. Sorry, <laughs> and she just looked at me. She goes, no, don't do that. And I was like, why not? And she's like, because if you do the heavy, you're never going to do the HTL. She's like, if you're going to do a heavy, just go ahead and <laughs> bite it in the butt and finish the HTL. Oh, no. So then two weeks, two weeks go by. I'm like, all right, fine, I'll sign up for the HTL. Yeah. I sign up for the HTL, which, you know, I didn't think anything of it. And then a week out, I look at Lee and I'm like, hey, how can I train for this? And he's like, you're just asking me now how to train. Do you realize that your, your HTL is in less than a week? And I was like, oh. Well, I guess I'm just, you know, going to have to suck gonna it up and it. do it. <laughs> but, you know, back to the point, th there are a lot of females. Actually, during my first HTL, I met Sarah Bagala. Mm -hmm. she, and, I, you know, I was, I was rocking and we were doing our 12-mile rock. And I didn't really know her too well, but I saw her pace and I was like, she looks like she knows what she's doing. Yeah. Let me stick with her. Yeah. And come to find out, this is like her, what, fourth or fifth <laughs> HTL. And I'm like, why would you do this more than once? That's but like, hey, yeah. badass once again. Yeah. And, and we're, we're going we're gonna to talk more about all the awesome, you know, badass babes in, in Girl, Work, Girl Work Nation. But I want to just hang on to this idea of, you know, confidence versus self-worth just for yeah. a second more. And confidence is, like we said, it's key. It's important. But... I find personally that confidence can ebb and flow, right? There's some days I feel more confident than others. Yeah. Maybe it's just the way my clothes are fitting, you know, maybe. It's the workout of the day. You, you know, know, there are some workouts you're going to be real good I, at. I don't know. Gonna suck. You know, it's the things people can, things and people can interact with you and it can, you know, lower your confidence a little bit. And, you know, it's, it's, it's something like, you know, you have to maintain, you know, it's, yeah. a, it's a constant thing you have to exercise and work on. But self-worth doesn't go away. If you know deep down, this, this is where I stand on this. And I know that that person or that this event or, or this thing that's going on is, is not a positive thing for my self-worth. You can do many things. And this is, again, going back to that responsibility. And I, I think, you know, there's been many times in my life where I've had, you know, bad situations where someone in a more powerful position wants to take advantage. Well, and it, and unfortunately, it's, it's mostly been men, but that's not to say it couldn't be otherwise. But this is, you know, when I was in a younger um, woman and, and starting out a career and, you know, this is my first job out of college. And in those situations, I hadn't, fortunately, I had enough self-worth to, to be able to say, hey, I'm going to get off the X. Um, I'm going to I'm going to remove myself from this situation because quite, quite frankly, I don't know what to do. Now, fortunately, I didn't have to lose my job. 
I was able to kind of, you know, go talk to someone. Hey, can I get pulled off this project? Yeah. This person's making me feel uncomfortable. I was, I was able to, to pull myself off the X, to get myself out of the danger. Yeah. And that was fortunate because not everybody has that, that luxury or, or is able to get that out because they are either, this is the, there's no place to hide. They're, this is the job they have to have to eat or to feed their family. Exactly. So, you know, I was lucky in that respect. Um, but there's been other times when I actually had to fight. And I, and I don't mean physically, but I had to actually, you know, go to people that I knew would listen and support me and say, this is happening, it's wrong, and, and, I, and I need it to change. Can you help me? Yeah. And that's where men and women alike, we can, we can support each other on this. And I, and I just, that's, that's really what this is about. It's, yeah. a, it's a, the Me Too can be. Men and women. It can be all across the board. We can all work mm -hmm. on this and really, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm often, I have a, a quick story to tell. My, my mom, uh, I, love, I love her. She's been a great influence in my life. Um, she actually today is my dad's would have been my dad's uh, 66th birthday he passed away um, when I was uh, 22 just out of college wow. and I um, uh, it was it was pretty traumatic it was sudden and um, I tried to resuscitate him and it, it didn't work so it, it was a long time for me to actually get by that but I saw in my mom and I still to this day such a strong woman who who had you know really met the love of her life and had a, a good marriage, but it maybe um, her sense of self was just a little bit less because they had been a strong unit for so yeah. long. And I saw that have to reemerge. And I saw her go to work every day and deal with the aftermath and deal with emotions in her and her two children. And a lot of people trying to give her advice on how to lead her life. And she just stuck to her guns, stayed you know, paid off her mortgage, retired with the max benefits that she could have in her pension, and she is a self-sufficient woman. And, and I'm telling you this to tell you that I love this. She was an English and a French teacher, yeah. and uh, she, she would tell me all these cool stories, you know, the, the Canterbury Tales and Grendel and Beowulf <laughs> and all these, you know, great things growing up being an English teacher. And there was one that I always remember and I think about it in this context, and it's the Wife of Bath tale by, by Geoffrey Chaucer. I don't know that The one. Canterbury Tales, the, uh, it's a great one. It's, it's an old English, and they got cliff notes for it, and uh, there's all, it, these all are all up to interpretation. But here's what, when she told this to me, this is what I took away from it. So the Wife of Bath, just really quickly, is, um, you know, it's set in the 14th century in England, and a knight has committed a terrible offense. He basically raped some woman in King Arthur's court. And it's, it's terrible, like you can't, you can't do that stuff. And even they, back in, back in the dark ages, knew that, so right? They do it. So they said, um, you know, he brought him to court and they said, you know, you committed a grave offense, you're, you're gonna get beheaded. And the queen, King Arthur's um, queen, she, she actually came to his defense and said, no, let's, make this more interesting. <laughs> she said, I want to give him a challenge. I want him, he'll have one year to go try to find the answer to what do women really want. And then if he comes back and he gives us the right answer, he can live. And if he doesn't, he's beheaded. So this, this night, he walks away, he's like, oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm screwed. I'm screwed. <laughs> so he spends the next course of the year going through King Arthur's kingdom and asking every woman he comes across, what is it that you want? What would you say, Bianca? Oh, gosh, that's a loaded question. Yeah. But we'll, get, we'll, get back to it. we'll get back to it. So he asks her, you know, he gets like, what do you think? He gets 10,000 different answers, right? Yeah. We, we, we're, all, we're all different people here, so... Some women want, you know, flattery. Some women want riches. Some women want a handsome husband. Some women want, you know, to have their own career. You know, it, it, he got all, all, of, all of the above. So he, in the story, he's distraught at this point. The, the time has come. He's on his way back. He's like, I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the answer. And he, you know, the story has it, he comes across this, um, 
this old, ugly woman, this hag. And she's very wise, and he's desperate. Like, this, this guy, he's, he, he, he's, he's, he'll take any answer at this point that sounds reasonable. And she's like, I'll, I know, I'll give you the answer, but you have to give me something in return. He's like, anything, whatever. And she goes, well, you have to marry me. And she, he's like, Okay. All right. So fine, fine, fine. It's better than, uh, I'm, I'm probably going to die anyway. So yeah. let's, sure. So they go to the court. He presents in front of the queen. Um, she, the woman whispers in his ear and she, he says to the, uh, the queen, that what women want the most is sovereignty. They want the ability to choose their own path. And the queen was like conferred with her ladies in waiting. Well, and she's like, <laughs> you, you shall live. You, that is the right answer. Yeah. So and, and the, there's an addendum to it. Um, the guy is like, yes. And then he looks over the hag and he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so he has to. He has to you know, follow through on his promise because uh, everybody's watching. And, and he's just like, man, this sucks. So they're, they're on their wedding night. <laughs> and uh, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of waiting for this like toad to turn into like a really pretty prince. No, 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 no. wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so they're on their wedding night, and he's, she's like, hey, and he's like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not up for this. But uh, the, she, she's like, well, hey, I'm kind of, guess by the way, I'm, I'm magical. So um, you can choose. You can have me be ugly and remain faithful to you for the rest of our, our lives together, or I can. Be beautiful and maybe I won't you know maybe that that won't happen maybe I'll just you know go find someone else and he was like whatever you you choose and she was like you you got it you got the right answer I will be both <laughs> I will be both beautiful and faithful so that the story wow. ends that way and I've always thought about that you know hearing that as a young girl and then thinking about it now and that's, that's what I think it really means to be a woman. If it means that you want to be CEO of your own company and, you know, go, go travel the world and do badass things and be a firefighter or, you know, president or whatever, go do it. But if you want to stay home and raise your kids or, you know, just have a different life, like, then, then that's what you should then, do. Then that's just as good. That's what you should do. And, and, you know, it's just, I, I, I think going back to GORA, because that's what brings us all together here today, is like, there's a place for everyone at GORA. Oh, yeah, you know? definitely. There, there's the, you know, the skinny runners, the, the power lifters, the crossfitters, the, 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 the moms, the, the moms, the military, the civilians. Um, I love it when I, when I see moms out there doing stuff, you know, 43-year-old woman's like, hey, I'm about to do my first Go Ruck event. And I'm like, that's, that's great. Yeah. You know, like you're, you're, still, you're still in the fight, yeah. you know? And, you know, when we're talking about, I have some friends before I did it. I've done one female, all-female event down in Miami. It was awesome. Uh, Aaron Forum led it. And he was just terrific cadre. And I had uh, Jason's cousin, Patty. Hey, Patty. Um, she came down for it, and then I had two friends, two of my, well, my, my cousin's wife, who's a great friend of mine, and then uh, my best friend, Monica, they, I talked them into it, and they were, oh, this is gonna be so hard, I'm yeah. so scared, I don't wanna do this, but if we were gonna do one, we really wanna do the all-female event, and they explained to me that it was really important that they felt a safe space to start in, and that, you know, it's, have you done an all-female event yet? I haven't. I have not yeah. done an all-female it's, event. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome. It's very, you know, you know, guys, they make all the jokes, whatever, you know, about it. But it's like, it's really something to see women working together and supporting each other um, in this team event. Because really, how, how many opportunities do we get to do that outside of a team, outside of a sports team? None really. I mean, unless you're in an all-female office, but even yeah, then, which you know. is. Which is, you know, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> it, it's unusual, I yeah. think, um, but yeah, they're out there. They are out there. I, yeah. there's, there's a company that I contracted for for a hot minute, Health Designs, pretty much all females. Oh, they're, yeah. They're one, they're one right. guy was the IT guy. 
Oh yeah. But, See, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, be, you know, you maybe have some work environments, um, smaller ones, mm -hmm. and then and then sports teams, um, which I know shaped me a oh, lot. Yeah, that definitely shaped yeah. my life. My life revolved around sports. Yeah. I actually played with the guy soccer team until I was about 13, and my mom said, "You can't play with boys anymore. <laughs> you need to play with yeah. the girls." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How was that? Did you did you like that, or were you? I was very boy? upset. Yeah. I was very upset. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I went from playing with my dad as my coach to all my friends were pretty much guy friends to, hey, you got to play with the girls, you know, sorry about So what about was it. different? Nothing really. Um, I've always been a tomboy though. Mm -hmm. So it's always like I have two younger brothers. Yeah. We, we roughed house, you know, I, I did taekwondo, swimming, soccer, like yeah. those, those are my things. But uh, I, the one thing I, I will say that changed was the girls team was a lot more close niche. It was more yeah. of a... It was more, not, not in a bad way though, it was, they were very welcoming. Mm -hmm. And then they wanted to hang out, out, out of soccer. The guys were like, okay, soccer practice over, see you all later. <laughs> and I never saw them again, right? you know, until the next practice. Yeah. But the girls would be like, hey, we're doing a slumber party, do you want to come over after practice? And yeah. it was something new to me. And so it took a second for me to adjust. Yeah. And I, I remember telling my mom, like, I don't want to, I don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. Can you please say no? Like, just say, my yeah. mom said, no, I'm sorry. And then like, you know, that would be yeah. it. But then I adjusted and I'm still best friends with a handful of the girls that I used to play soccer with when I was like 13. Yeah. I think there's probably a lot of go rock women out there that can relate to that, that grew up kind of either being a tomboy mm -hmm. or playing on the boys' teams. I know I did, and I know that transition was hard because it around puberty, which sucks. And and I was really like re a reluctant into the puberty thing. I was like, oh, <laughs> man. And still, let's be honest, it sucks. It yeah. still sucks. But like... Um, uh, it took me a while too because I, I missed, I, you know, I was either doing individual sports or I was used to that kind of like, you know, very kind of transactional, yeah. like, hey, you're playing, great, you know, we don't have to small talk. But it wasn't until college when I uh, walked on to Georgetown's uh, track and field team, which I did not know at the time was a Division I top <laughs> tier school. <laughs> so I got my ass handed to me every day at practice. Which is a, it's a great thing to do yeah, that, you know, say, like, it probably made you better. It, it made me, it made me strong, but, um, I'll tell you what, like that, that experience, um, and the bond that I still have with my teammates today, just because we endured mm -hmm. terrible weather, terrible workouts and, and a lot of, you know, kind of difficult situations, um, you yeah. know, at school and, and whatnot. And, and we were, we were in in there together. And yeah. so going to a go work event, it reminds me of that and it brings back those good memories. That's exactly what it is. I feel like it, I, I almost fit in with that. Like it's, yeah. it's you, you guys are going through this suckage and carnage as Jason would say. <laughs> <laughs> and when you come out of it, you're like, hey guys, we, we did it. Like together, yeah. you know? And I want to go back to that all females event. I haven't yeah. done an all females event, but I did. What is going on? <laughs> I'm a little, oh yeah, I'm a little nervous well, here. Bombers, uh, we so by the way, we didn't stick with the the soft stuff. We have a bunch of wine and, and tequila. I, guess, I think that's tequila. And tequila. This was a request from the ladies. Oh shit! All right. Who's which? <laughs> hey, oh, but I need man. some salt and lime. I need Wait, some salt and lime. Wait, I only do Patron. Yeah. <laughs> can I have some, can I have some Patron? <laughs> I'll, I'll drink it if it's Patron. I will drink it. But uh, it, it'll be interesting. We'll, we'll take this in a minute. Yeah, we, we knew. We knew. No, we're going to do it. We're going right, to do it. We're going to do it live. Ready? Patron, yeah, I want Patron. Patron. Here, here. Give me Patron. Yeah, just small, small, small. Got it. Hey, nice. It's actually Patron. I'll stick with the It's not water. Pour. It's not water. <laughs> nice, light Patron pour. Oh, my oh, gosh. That, good? Yeah, that yeah, looks yeah, a little heavy. Good. Oh, and there, there's more. I need a lime and salt. That's what I there said. Where's the lime <laughs> and the salt? No, you have a okay, you ready? Yeah, let's do this. Ready? Wait, wait. To all of you badass women, I hope this is a better version. Touche. Touche. Yeah. That wasn't that bad. That was <laughs> Chase it down. That wasn't that bad. That, um. is, that is in, in what, uh, <sighs> three years of the second shot I've seen you take? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, I want to go back. I didn't yeah. do an all women's event, but... We did, what event was it? The Veterans Daylight. Yeah. All right. We had a handful of women there. It was you, mm -hmm. me, Learin. Learin, Sandra. We had a, a couple of first timers, a couple of first time females out there. And the cadre specifically said all men off of the Zodiac. 
all females yeah. have to pick it up and go. Yeah. You know what? We moved a lot faster we did. and a lot more efficient than the men did. Yeah. We did. Yeah, we it did was, communicate. Yeah, there was there was some good good comms going on with there. Yeah, the we we the the female events. If you haven't tried one yet, you you need to try it. And I, I'm I'm due for one. I really one that's on my list is the Mama Stump I want themed to do one. That. I, um, you know this this is what's also really cool. So, you know. There's a lot of badass women in our community, and I'm going to give some shouts out. Like, you know, you've got your, you got your Paige Bowies, you got your Jolla Shaws, you know, you've got your Stephanie McGrew, and you know, uh, Anna Anna Banana. Um, <laughs> but you also have like your Mama Stumps, oh, yeah. you know, and and she, I mean, it wasn't so much about how much she could lift and 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 if she could do exactly what she just did it her way and her way was was strong and it was yeah. it was great for the community and great for the team um i love you know i love seeing all these women out there you know putting themselves out there organizing their communities i mean carmela pine up in the dmv um tina streeter i mean she is Hi, all over the place <laughs> she signed up for yeah. selection signed she up signed up for, up for selection, selection tina pretty badass and you know ann mischeski margaret hope uh, if I didn't say Stephanie already, Stephanie McGrew. I've only made And and you know I, I I love and Francesca and I mean there's just so many of you all and I I I've had the pleasure to and Nikki Nikki J came through here and stayed she stayed with us and I got to meet her son and she's just so cool like these are the type of women that you you meet in Go Ruck events and that you get to know better. And, and it's just, it's really great. And yeah. so um, I know we were going to ask Bomber to, yeah. to join us, but I also, Bomber, come tell us about the, which women events are coming up. So. A few of them. There's a couple of tufts in California. I have the dance. Yeah. Rigged. But first, I do have to say something. <laughs> the, uh, my oh, yeah, we need to give you a drink. That, that has there, tequila in it. It does. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, no, oh, no. no. Oh, oh, I see how it is. We're going to do this. Um, there's a lot of women watching today. Oh, really? That's good. Good. I would like us to show the nation how many um, how many women are in here watching. Oh, oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Come on in. Yeah. Come back in here real quick. Yeah, come here real quick. So, just so you know, we've, we've got the Go Rock internally. We've got, we're made up of 30% women. And that has grown over the years and not by accident. Um, it, it's, it's just when you've got great candidates coming through, it's, it's a really, it makes, it makes the decision easy. And, you know, we can still, it, it's a testament to say you can still be part of a very masculine, um, you know, SF brand that's about being tough. And, you know, just so you know, there's a lot of great people working behind the scenes. And, and you know, I'd like to give a shout out. We got Lauren, customer service, Sandra, accountant, Liren, heads up customer service. Lindsay, uh, digital marketing and social media, and badass modeling our Go Ruck gear. <laughs> Women's apparel coming out in the fall. I'm also modeling it too. With some simple, the first ever simple pants for women. And then, oh, Kendra's got a yeah. shirt on as well. Kendra's in our graphic design and, and, and marketing team as well. So, and Balmer, he's our honorary I female. <laughs> See how slim he looks in this shirt? This is, this is very slim in black. Yeah. This is the best show ever. <laughs> Everybody. <That's, laughs> those other two guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so tell us, a, Bomber, we, we know you love us the best. Yes. But tell us more about the women's events. You can look on, under special events is yeah. where they're all listed. There's going to be three in California. Bye, y'all. From uh, in Santa Cruz on um, July 12th, mm -hmm. there's a tough. In San Francisco on the 14th and 15th, there's a stuff, a tough and a scow. <laughs> and a, a stuff. Stuff, 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 a tough and a scow all at the same time. On um, what what month? That's uh, July 14th and 15th. Okay. And then in July 13th at Half Moon's Bay, there's a tough. These women's only events. Mm -hmm. Then Mama Stump HDL, it'll be 11 uh, November 30th through December 2nd in H Town. 
down in Houston, the Dirty Dirty. Oh, they said New Orleans. I'm, that's 2019. Oh, I'm okay. I'm super stoked. That okay. In 2019, it's going to be in New Orleans, which. Wow. Watch Mama out. Mama Stump would have rather had it in New Orleans than Shreveport. <laughs> city folks know what I'm saying. Awesome. Yeah. So cool. we have a couple of questions. Oh, oh, good. Oh, is it question to, time? Shout out to Pumpkin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, yes. Sam. <laughs> um, Rich, my one of my 18th favorite coasties. Sometimes he's 15. <laughs> <or> so. <laughs> he said, uh, the badass definition, physical, or does it mean more? Oh, it definitely yeah. means more. Yeah. It transcends. Uh, no, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, just, yeah. I mean, obviously, I didn't not very muscular <laughs> but you know badass is a state of mind you know it's about like we said it's about having that self-worth and and knowing when you know your self-worth and others come together and have to coexist yep. and being able to take a stand and do what's right and be a leader and and, and you know it's it really comes down to supporting those around you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing with the events is like, you'll see people kind of in the background until they're ready and they know that, Hey, I excel at this point. This is how I can help. Not mm -hmm. everyone can help carrying the really heavy stuff, but that person that's out there, that's motivating you yeah. or leading you or helping, you know, give you a snack or <laughs> relieve you for at least five seconds. Like yeah. that helps. Yeah. So you don't, you know, yeah. Badass is definitely not just physical wise. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, they ask about mentors. Oh, okay, cool. Yes, um, you know, my one of my first mentors, beside, uh, aside from my my mom, um, was Jason's mom. Actually, she was my tennis coach when I was a sophomore, and um, it, you know, she just she like Jason talked a lot about her at, on the show, but she is a very determined and and strong young woman and she she had a really great impact on my as a tennis coach you know and it showed me like hey you just got to dig deeper than those other you know the other players out there because you know they were bigger than me or you know could hit the ball harder and things like that but i just would have to be more stubborn and, and outlast them yeah. and, and and be there so yeah uh you know, so Julie's been been a great mentor in my life. Um, I think about, uh, I think about like other women I've met through GORUCK. Um, Trisha through Buffalo Trace is, is a, I learn a lot from her all the time. Um, you know, I've reached out to several women um, in advance of the show just to say, hey, what, what do you think? What are you interested in hearing about? You know, because I, I think I think that's a. It's nice to ask those kind of questions and, and hear what people want to hear. hear, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, Who is your see. mentor? Uh, you know, I, I have two, and oddly enough, one of them is male. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandfather. So he he's no longer with us, but he pretty much was there from when I was a little baby until uh, I think what was it? He passed away when I was 22. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'd come off that soccer field, and my dad had the best intention, and he'd be like, huh. Oh, you, you could have done this. You, you could have done that. You, you should have passed the ball here. You, you should have ran here. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Okay, fine. <laughs> but my grandfather would come, and when I was younger, he'd come with a dollar, and he'd be like, you did, you did great. <laughs> you gave it your all, and that's all that matters. Yeah. And so he made me realize that it's like, you're going to have your ups and downs in mm -hmm. a game, but as long as you give it your all, right. and you put everything you got into it, right. then, then you're good. Right. Um, my mom, she's she's a badass, but she has a younger sister that could probably kick her ass. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh yeah, and that's I call her my Nuna. Um, uh -huh. She did her first event. I, I talked her into a light up in New York uh -huh. when I was up there. Good. Um, she did not want to do it. Mm -hmm. But when at the end of it, she's like, "I'm wet. I'm cold. I went into the Hudson River, but I got a patch." <laughs> and that, that's all she cared about. She's like, "I got my patch." Good. Yeah. Um, but she another she's another one that's always like, "Hey." You know, a lot, a lot of people don't know I did the fire, fire academy and it didn't work out for me right now, you know, maybe in the future, but as our, of right now, our it's, benefit. Not, it's not working. Yeah, <laughs> benefit. I enjoy working at GORUCK though, but uh, it didn't work out. And she, you know, instead of saying, you know, I don't think that's right for you, da, 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 whatever, or, you know, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. She more, more encouraged me like, Hey, you can, you can step up with the boys. You mm -hmm. can do this, but you know, if, if if there's other cards in your playing field, it, it's okay to say, 
hey, this isn't working yeah. for me. And that's a, that's one thing you have to keep in mind. Like, if it's just not working out, don't force it. Yeah. It's just, you know, if it's not in your plane, if it's not in your car, just let, just let it go. Move on to bigger and better things. Yeah. So shout out to Nuna. I don't know if she's watching, but <laughs> hey. Cool. Also, yeah, yeah your mom. Okay. <laughs> oh, hey, <laughs> mom. Yes. Um, Cadre Dustin want to know if you're ready for the Immersion 24. Oh, my God. <laughs> Funny story. Oh, wait, I got this. <laughs> Emily is 100% ready. She has her shark repellent uh, anklet ready yes. to go. Yes. But uh, no, <laughs> we did the beach. I didn't do the beach beta, but I shadowed it. Here comes Emily <laughs> on her bike because the Uber can't um, on her. <laughs> um, she's killing it in the first 12 hours, kicking ass. <laughs> like they're practicing, they're doing this. She's, her competitive side is coming out. Yeah. And then she gets in the car and she looks at me, she goes, Bianca, take me home. <laughs> I didn't want to go in the ocean I was like, at night. We're not, we're, <laughs> gonna, we're gonna suck this up. And then BD told me you have to show up at the beach. I, and she came in strong, she finished strong. I was scared though, I have to say, <laughs> like for the first time, ever I felt like I could really appreciate when someone says I'm really nervous and I'm really scared about doing this event because before I'd be like oh you'll be fine like you know there's nothing to it this one I really was like we're getting into the Atlantic Ocean <laughs> in the middle of the night on a raft we made with PVC Little did you know, the guys down the, <coughs> down the shore, I went over to talk to them, they were chumming the water up for shark fishing. I didn't tell anyone that, though. We know, I bought one thing for that event. It was a $60 shark repellent uh, <laughs> bracelet or thing. I don't know. I don't care if it worked or not. It just made me, it was my security blanket. I didn't show up with water or anything. I just was like, here's, here's my, blan my, my security blanket. But I, I will say, I conquered some fears that day. I am still not going out there again. But <laughs> it was, I, I know if it, there was a survival thing and we landed in the middle of the ocean that I wouldn't be paralyzed with fear. Because exactly. I've done it now and I learned some really great skills like how to take my simple pants and make them into a flotation device and how to, cool. um, you know, how to, to build a raft and how to signal and how to do all these other, how to save someone when they're, you know, and how to not drown yourself when you're, you're in the water. But we, I just want to just throw out there, we were one <laughs> nautical mile off the shore from midnight until about 4 a.m. Yeah. Because they brought us in just before the shark feeding time, thank you. But it, <laughs> you know, I was really like panicky for a little while and then I was like, oh, the stars are really beautiful and I just accepted my fate and I just <laughs> trusted that my fellow GRTs and cadre would not let me die or if if they did, I would uh, I would uh, have my shark band on and the sharks would leave me alone. <laughs> so I don't know if I saved everyone that night or not, but uh, and I, I will say, and, and sounds corny, but I really learned a lot about myself and a lot about um, how to trust other people and allow them to, to push, push me beyond my limits. But if, if you get a chance to do immersion, um, we'd we would like to do a 24-hour one again and have it be in the ocean. Um, Cause that, if you want pucker factor high, <laughs> that, that'll get it up. <laughs> uh, Shredder says happy badasses day. Oh, thanks and also Shredder. A lot of a frenzy, a lot of questions of people wondering who took this amazing photo. Oh, I, I got, Lindsay uh, woke me up on a Sunday. I, after, oh, it wasn't Nick? No, it no, was Lindsay. It was Lindsay, oh, wow. a badass, Lindsay woke badass me up female. and convinced me to do this uh, photo shoot. And at that exact moment, I was uh, throwing that sandbag thinking of, you know, I was picturing just throwing it at Lindsay's face. <laughs> And that's the, that's the outcome. Yeah, that's how we know you, we really love each other, you know, when you do stuff like that with our gear. So. I also want to say, like, have, who is the only, I know the girls have it, but has anyone cried during an interview with you? During an interview? <laughs> funny, funny story. <laughs> Bomber. Uh, so we were interviewing Bomber to be our community manager. We flew him in from uh, Shreveport. Shreveport. Norling. So excited. You know, this is one of those things that can either go really great or really poorly. The bomber wanted to sabotage it because we put him in the champagne room and uh, just asking him questions like, hey, what do you, you know, what do you think this job would look like and how, you know, what? He, he got so nervous that he started crying. <laughs> That's okay. And I was like, I, 
is this like bomber joking bomber or is this like and then we were like oh shit he's really crying he needed a beer he so we, we brought him outside took him out of the champagne room gave him a beer said it's okay we can start over again some other time but uh, the good news is that if you're applying for a job at GORUCK and you cry in the interview, you can still get the job. <laughs> Last thing I've got is Mama Stump. Oh, yeah. I just want to say, the first thing when I got here that I asked I want to do was mm -hmm. if we could change. And a lot, it wasn't my idea. A lot of the people gave you, yeah. The female jerkies oh, nice. that came up with that or whatever is making the all-women's HTL the Mama Stump HTL. Yeah, that's such a great and idea. I appreciate y'all letting that happen. Yeah. It's, you know, I, I met her, I had the pleasure of meeting her once when she was here for the, the RWB Rock Club. Mm -hmm. And she, that, that woman, man, she, she, she kicked cancer's ass many, many times. And she, she, she walks in the room and you just noticed her. I mean, she was just a presence and, and someone that we, we miss a whole lot. But it's really, it's really awesome to, to honor her with the HTL and I, I'm going to have to make my way to, to either New Orleans or Houston at some point. Uh, I'll get there because just, I mean, just just out of her, you know, I want to do the event with, with all females, yeah. but I also, I really love the memorial aspect of our events. I mean, I would love to think about her for that weekend and, and you know, live my life um, knowing that she's still has a, a presence in, in people's day-to-day -day and still inspiring others. And I think the same thing about Joe Warner and, and the Bragg Heavy and, and, you know, next year even having the element to, to memorialize our, our fallen participant and comrade, you know, Jerome. So, yes, it, those, those are events are the ones I, I save up for because yeah. it's, it's really special to be to get there and be with everyone. And, and there's just an electricity too. I mean, I, people talked about it with Bragg Heavy and I and you know, I had never had the chance to go. And this last time I, I felt that. I felt like people, you know, it's like the Super Bowl of, of Go Ruck and, and you get to see all these, all these badass women, all these great guys, you know, people introducing themselves to me and you're like, yeah, we, we know each other. Yeah. You know, I, we might not have like, talked but I, I know who you are and it's it's really cool to to actually do something together with them so I'm gonna work on my my pull-ups and things like that a little more but I wanna I wanna I already started training to get back and and really you know make that a great event so, so do you think if it, I'll sign up for the mama stump 2019 HTL if you do it with me. I will let's do All it right, deal deal Done. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome. I have one last question. Okay, one more. Oh. How are uh, how are you going to break it to Jason and Lane that y'all are taking over the show? Well, you know, just the way it's always done. This is happening. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's uh, this is a cool this is a cool thing. This is you know Blaine's idea to to do this podcast, and and I'm really glad that they started it. And oh, this is fun. Yeah. We're going to have to just start mixing it up a little more. That's, right. I think, in general. So um, I, I don't know what time. Uh, it's about tie that time because I've got to go pick up Sandra my kids. One last. Oh, one last question. Yeah. Sorry. Because Aunt and Mom are on here, and they want to do a badass go Oh, oh all right. nice. Well, well, we'll this is happening. So, <laughs> so, yeah, well, uh, the cool stuff is that we got all sorts of cool things happening for for. Go Ruck ladies out there, some, you know, if, and, and we want to hear your ideas too. So if you've got ideas, post them, we read them, we hear them, or send them in. Yeah, just, to, just send them to team at GoRuck.com. Yeah, team at go we, we got com. you. <laughs> yeah, we listen. We read all those things, and, you know, maybe it won't be tomorrow, but eventually we get there. So um, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. It's Go Ruck Show with Emily, Bianca, and Bye, bom Bomber. Bomber, you know. I didn't cry. <laughs> <laughs>